In this video I will try to build a computer from old components that I had laying around the house and uh, components that I got from friends that had them lying around the house. The motherboard and CPU and graphics card uh, will be pretty decent. They are the ones that I replaced a few weeks ago in my PC but uh, everything else is uh, pretty ancient as I could say. Uh, I won't uh, tell you everything about the components uh, but I I will uh, uh, as I start to mount them in the case I will give you more information as I go. So now, as you can see, this was full of dust, very very dirty at one point. I cleaned it just a little bit because sadly I don't have enough time to clean it uh, even more. And this, one moment, this was broken. So I glued it in place with super glue and then I put... Uh, uh, some of this uh, pad, I hope you can see its texture so you understand what I'm talking about my wife uses this for, for removing makeup so I put a little bit of this around and put some super glue and this when it uh, is dry is extremely strong this fibers uh, with the super glue is yeah you can break it again so if you want to break this it will break somewhere else so it's perfect one is missing on the bottom on the top they are okay but it's enough this one even if the one on the bottom is missing it's still good not great looking but yeah for a component that is a case that's probably 10 years old and was almost thrown away it's good enough the lateral side was missing a friend had one from a different case that he threw away and saved this for future use he thought he will need it somewhere and he gave it to me and weirdly enough it's yeah one-handed work I can put it in place sadly now but uh, I can tell you that it fits incredibly well it's perfect although it's from a case made by a completely different company years apart from this one I will move these uh, brackets I don't know if it's the correct term I will uh, move them for the new motherboard in the correct places I have a PSU with bad caps that I will recap and use it in this build I'm not going to keep this build for me I'm going to sell it but uh, sell it at the cheapest possible price so anything uh, apart from the motherboard CPU and graphics card I will not uh, put towards the final price of this so if anybody who buys it wants a better case he can upgrade of course but I'm trying to I don't know give a person with less money the chance to have a really good working computer for a really really cheap price I could have bought a better case and everything but then the price would would go up and I don't see the point if somebody needs a PC just for for work uh, 
it's not that important that it doesn't look perfectly so I will continue this is the progress so far motherboard installed graphics card installed and the right controller for ID drives because a good friend of mine had a ton of them laying around and he told me that he, he will give them to me so this is a great use for this right, right controller and those drives so this is the case not a great case but good enough and this is the PSU that I have to recap you can see problems there and there somewhere a bad cap it's not a uh, well it's a pretty cheap PSU I was gonna say not a great one but it's a no name actually but at least it has decent size radiators and uh, I can say a decent size transformer or at least not a tiny one they market it as a I don't know if you can see here PL450 but they don't say anywhere that it has 450 watts they only say 250 watts on these two 3.3 and 5 volt rail maximum so at least they don't try to lie it will handle 450 watts but anyway this build I had it uh, in my old actually in my PC my old PC build and it was pulling a maximum of 160 watts so any PSU with uh, decent power can handle that it has everything that I need all the connectors and I will be also replacing the old seized up fan it's not a, not a uh, brand fan the new one but at least it's perfectly working not seized up like this one you can see somebody uh, cut the wires from this PCU and probably was running a fan from the motherboard or, or from some headers I'm not sure about that so I will continue with the build it has been about a week from when I filmed the last part of this video I had other things that I needed to take care of but now I can continue with this build you can see the lateral side from a completely different case but it fits perfectly let me just take it out of the way ok so we have the AMD A6 uh, 3670K if I remember correctly 4 gigabytes of RAM that I took from my current PC because the ones that I bought online uh, came uh, not working arrived not working and the person that I bought that from should have sent me a replacement but did not now it's not uh, answering uh, the telephone, not answering an email and um, I will probably have to get my money back with the help of the police but yeah, what can you do? There are these kinds of people, you encounter them from time to time so now for the time being 4 GB from my uh, PC just for testing 
the HD6670 graphics card, 2 GB of RAM on that. Right controller is a fast track, uh, promise fast track uh, 100 TX2. I don't know if you can see down there, sorry. No, I don't think. I put a uh, Intel CPU cooler on these uh, hard drives in RAID because they were uh, getting pretty hot. No, they are perfectly uh, cool. First I had one uh, separate 13 gigabytes drive and three four, uh, 40 gigabytes in RAID, RAID 0 but one of them was failing so I had to take it out. So now uh, just two drives in RAID 0 for a total of 80 gigabytes. But I had uh, another idea and I went online and bought really cheap these two guys another two drives 40 gigabytes max stars like the ones already inside and I will do a 4 drive uh, IDE RAID, uh, RAID 0 and see how that goes and this one 13 gigabytes I will keep just as a backup and it will not be connected to the controller because the controller only has uh, four ports. I changed the caps in the PSU and had to modify you can see there the connector for the motherboard okay let me try and focus better because it was not focusing it was originally just uh, 20 pin and uh, I needed 24 pin. It worked uh, with the 20 pin but um, I did not like it so if I could modify it you can see here I connected the wires. If I can modify, you, modify it why would I not modify it? And uh, that little part moment it's something similar to this that I cut from uh, an older uh, old connector that I had lying around for the motherboard and found the part that was uh, fitting in the uh, re remaining uh, four sockets so now everything is connected you can see this is the diagram that I use to know what and where to connect. Actually it adds one 12 volts, one 5 volts, one ground and one 3.3 volts. So it's just uh, for a little bit more, uh, more power to the motherboard. Probably some of this power is going to the graphics card. So yeah, my wires are starting uh, from the PSU just for this, but I splice them and add it this. So everything is running perfectly. The PSU handles this very well, it does not heat up, does not make any weird noises. And now let me just show you the caps that I had to change. I think these are not all of them, I throw away already some of them, but I kept just uh, this to show you how bad they were. Let me try and connect it. Okay, it's connected. So, 680 microfarads, and this should have been. One moment. Yeah, you can see 2200 microfarads. We are up to 619, rising slowly, but clearly is way, 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 way off. And the same with the other two. 
actually one of them okay can seem to get this off actually one of them I think this one should have been 470 microfarads but now it is one moment not very easy to connect it with just one hand but I will do my best come on okay connected let's power it on you can see nothing so this cap is completely gone if I remember well it was on the uh, standby 5 volt rail so this PSU was clearly not working at all at this point I replaced all these caps with old caps from old TVs that are probably 3, 4, maybe 5 times uh, older than these, these caps and still work perfectly so that says a lot about the quality of modern day, modern day components and of course those also are not uh, high-end caps are no names but still working after a lot of years this is another uh, 2200 microfarads you can see way less so yeah clearly I'm keep, keeping all boards from all TVs for caps replacement I could buy them new but sadly I it's pretty hard to, in my area to to get high quality original ones so low quality uh, new ones are way worse in my in my opinion than uh, old ones but with good quality so we will continue one moment I'm searching for something around here I can't see it I will have to stop the video for a moment let's continue I forgot to tell you that I add a DVD writer as SATA one so I don't use these ports and anyway uh, this controller did not recognize optical drives so we have a new DVD writer and I will add this card reader that I made from an old printer board salvage from a dead printer on off button I added just now and uh, and I was not sure about uh, this if I will edit or not because it was working quite randomly sometimes it would uh, start up sometimes not and then I realized if I uh, cycle quickly the power on and off it always works so probably the printer uh, had some kind of way of telling this to start up just by uh, cycling the power maybe I'm not sure but uh, if it's off you start it it will not work but if you stop it and start it really fast then always it's working and reading perfectly so I will add this to the build and uh, I will tell the person who will get this build how this should be operated okay I forgot to take out my SD card it's pretty useful I always use card readers it's easier than always search for the camera cable okay I will start adding the new two new hard drives and this to the build and then power it up and see how everything works you can see here the edit SATA power adapter power connector maybe better to the original cable 
it had a connector for floppy power here but that is not needed and anyway there is another uh, connector for, for floppy that will remain here on cut so this is the power for the DVD writer and the card reader I installed and goes uh, the cable goes through here out here to the back and into this uh, USB 2.0 back uh, panel or how should I say that is connected to the motherboard USB 2.0 header and you can see here the card reader very well in place so this will be a pretty good computer with everything that you need but it will clearly make lots of noise the PSU fan is not controlled speed controlled CPU fan is but it goes to 4000 uh, RPM so this will be noisy hard drives will be really noisy because they are uh, 7200 uh, RPM hard drives but yeah it will not look really nice it will not be silent but it will perform really well so I think that's good enough in this case also I forgot to tell you that I added a serial port here serial port not serials <laughs> uh, I just had it lying around and the motherboard had a connector so why not use it just wanted to show you how nice this RAID hard drives look I really really like it of course I had to connect the hard drive activity led directly to the RAID card PCI card because otherwise it will not show any activity the floppy drive is there just to fill up this hole so it doesn't look that bad the CD-ROM in the upper part it will not be connected and is there about for the same reason to fill up that hole and this drive ha has some data on it for backup uh, and the drives, uh, drivers and stuff like that and is there just in case something wrong happens Of course it can never be connected uh, unless this RAID is uh, broken up and I will not recommend that to the future user so probably this will stay for the rest of its life not connected. Anyway the data that's on it I will also put on a DVD disk. So I think it's connected back in place. I really like this <laughs> and uh, I will just have to connect this uh, this will go uh, over the power connector so I have to remove these two power connectors to put this in place and this goes on into the system fan from the motherboard so this actually is uh, speed control with the CPU not exactly at the same speed this will go pretty much slower but it is speed control so it's not making lots of noise this is making lots of noise this and of course the hard drives so i will continue the hard drive cooler is in place once again 
you can see it's pretty tight here so not making noises or moving around and cooling these hard drives pretty well all what's left to do is to activate the okay clean up the wires a little bit and activate the write array and install windows and we'll go from there just wanted to show you the array there will be some very bad flickering of the monitor so sorry for that you can see the array sadly uh, the drives are not uh, all identical and one of them is uh, a little bit smaller it has a smaller capacity but nothing I can do about it just uh, to install Windows and do some tests and see what's the speed it's been more than a week from the last time that I worked on this system but sadly I didn't have uh, time for it my new memory is installed 4, gig 4 gigabytes of low profile RAM working perfectly it's uh, 1600 uh, megahertz RAM DDR3 this is the model of the motherboard I forgot to tell it until now uh, so yeah I had to buy memory twice because the first one was bad and uh, I can't get my money back the user that I bought it from uh, can't be contacted anymore and from what I found online he he did this to some other people and we all lost our money because of him but yeah what can you do probably police will deal with him sooner rather than later so now I will put the side of the case on do some tests Windows is installed on this is working very very well it's really snappy uh, there are two, two monitors connected to this um, actually now only one of them is connected I took out some cables at one point and the second one will be directly to the motherboard will be connected directly to the motherboard so this graphics card is uh, driving one monitor and the graphic card from the processor is driving the second monitor so that is pretty nice PCU is running very very well so put everything uh, together check this printer to see if it's working and I can add it to the system it also has a scanner so that's pretty good these are the two monitors and yeah almost finished everything is running perfectly Windows XP it's doing its thing tons of updates get ready from for some screen flashing <laughs> okay I'm trying to show you the whole setup kind of hard I'll do my best. Yeah, my legs there. Hairy legs. <laughs> so, it's not great looking, but it's running 
very very well better than what I expected let me try now it's flashing like mad so this is the main monitor it will it's connected to the dedicated graphic card the gigabyte HD6670 this is the one you are using when you are entering BIOS and Windows and everything this is the secondary monitor it's starting up only in Windows it's connected to the graphic card from the CPU this has a lot better colors but uh, it uh, takes about five minutes to get to the maximum color output and uh, brightest and everything because it's what can you say it's an older monitor both of them actually are older monitors this one doesn't have uh, such nice colors like this one but uh, it starts up instantly okay this is from the refresh or the way I tilt my camera okay this is weird let me try and tilt it here no not doing the same thing I think this weirdly has exactly the same refresh rate as my camera and this one no way way different refresh rate the scanner is working perfectly into the monitors one moment it's really nice to be able to move this from one to the other and it's the first dual screen dual monitor setup that I saw with uh, CRT monitors it looks kind of weird with the big frames but this is very nice for uh, putting a movie or a YouTube video on this monitor doing other stuff on this one or adding a TV tanner and using this as a TV while doing stuff on the uh, first monitor it's yeah, it's a good setup really good setup and I will do my best to sell it as cheap as I can I really don't want to make money off of this I'm just uh, taking money for the lowest possible price for my CPU graphics card and motherboard and of course the RAM that I had to buy the hard drives were uh, very very cheap so I'm not counting them in and everything else printer with a working scanner and uh, so sadly dried up cartridges but they can be replaced, replaced or refilled everything else I will give for free so this will be very cheap and really nice for someone to use these are the results from the hard drives you can see with only two hard drives about half of the speed of the four drives that are in now this is uh, my two terabytes hard drive just for compar uh, comparison you can see that um, it's uh, in sequential, sequential reads and writes is faster even in uh, 512 kilo it's faster but uh, in smaller in 4 kilo smaller uh, data uh, it's lower than this write so these old hard drives in write 0 or 4 of them are quite uh, faster than this one for uh, stuff in doing stuff in windows or in, in uh, on the internet because they are well, they work faster with uh, small uh, data and this is my uh, samsung ssd just to show you how way 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 faster is an ssd compared to everything else but uh, i really like how this this pc is working let me try start up google chrome uh, bear in mind that windows is doing its thing tons of updates so this is quite quite slow it's even if i'm thinking a little bit now 
it's almost uh, pointless trying to show you how the PC is working at this point because Windows is doing a lot of stuff in the background but I don't know maybe you can see it's really 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 snappy yeah pretty good pretty pretty good everything starting up really well yeah okay it said that uh, I didn't really realize to let it finish its update so I can really show you how good it's working but even uh, even with that I think you you get the point everything it's really snappy so this is the scan version of this just the preview so it's clearly working well and now let me show you what I was talking about this card reader you can see it did not start so you have to cycle it a few times I hope the tons of work the hard drive is doing will not make it uh, not read the card at this point no it did it so I have no clue why it is doing this it's not starting from the first uh, power on but probably like I said before the printer was giving it a signal to start by cycling the power or something so now yeah it's telling me it can perform faster but it actually can't because it's from an old printer so here it is I don't even know no probably I don't have any data on this card I've deleted the pictures from it but you can see it's reading it without any problems of course let's uh, safely remove it but which one of them H should be the good one. Okay, it's removed. You can see it's closed and power off. I actually cut the power to it completely from this. Let me try again, see if it goes it goes from the first one. No, the same. So I have no clue why it has to do this. You have to cycle it after a few times until it will actually power on. Oh, actually, it might not power on this time because I've just removed it, removed it by from Windows. So maybe yeah. I have to take out the card and reinsert it so it will start. It's just read it. Same old message. So I have no idea why that is happening, but uh, it's always reading it, so if you cycle it a few times it's impossible not to read it, and when it's working, it's working very well, so yeah, <laughs> that's that. I can make it work better than this. Which one was it? H, I think. Power off and take it out. So, this is the whole build. Doesn't look very, very nice. It makes plenty of noise, 
but it works very well and it will be very very cheap so thank you very much guys for watching I hope you enjoyed the video this weird build and see you again